groups of permutations a permutation on a set is meant to be a bijection on that set a function which is one to one and one two in this lecture we are interested in permutations on finite sets and to make the idea clear we will start with a set with the three elements as we hear as we see here in the example so we will study the symmetric groups but we will start with an element that contains a set sorry that contains the three elements where we can find out all the permutations or the bijections on the set but we will give some notations in that accordance so a permutation let's choose a permutation on f which is a bijection that sends one to two and two to three and three to one and we will represent it uh, this way and we will say f of one is two f of two is three and f of three is one and according to that we can list all the six permutations on s3 and here they are we will call this element to be the identity element because it sends one to one two to two and three to three this is another uh, permutation which, which sends one to one two to three and three to two here it sends one to two two to one three to three and so on so we will have only six permutations on the group oh, sorry on the set which will be group set that consists of three elements that we called uh, one two and three now what happened when we do composition of these permutations you know permutations are functions and then we can do compositions so let us choose uh, this permutation to be f and this permutation to be g and see what happened for uh, what what does the permutation do what's the result of permutation now let's see f compose g of 1 means f of g of 1 but g of 1 is 2 because it sends 1 to 2 so we get f of 2 and f of 2 is 2 so we get the result to be 2 again f compose g of 2 which is f of g2 and g2 is 1 since g sends 2 to 1 so we get f of 1 and f of 1 is 3 f sends 1 to 3 and again f compose g of 3 is f of g of 3 and g of 3 is 3 as we see here and f of 3 is 1 as f sends 3 to 1 so at the end what we got f compose g has sent 1 to 2 and sent 2 to 3 and sent 3 to 1 so here we go sends 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 and here we got the composition of two permutations to be a two permutations down here we will show that the compositions of permutations can be done faster so this is g we say f compose g so g comes first and then f now let's see we start with one in g so g takes one to two and then we go all the way to two under f and will that will go f will take two to two so we get one is going to two let us use another color g takes two to one and then we go to one and f and we will find that f takes one to three so follow the red path we will find it that it goes from two to three so again g takes three to three and go all the way to see where three is in f f takes a three to one so the follow the purple path we'll find it that it's it takes three to one so this is the compositions that we got here already but we got it faster okay so let us see uh, more uh, two more examples of uh, doing compositions of permutations uh, the short way so let us see uh, let us go call uh, this to be uh, G again and this uh, choose F to be that and then let's do the uh, composition so 1 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1 so we get 1 goes to 1 okay 3 goes to 2, two sorry 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 2 
so follow the red so we'll have two going to two uh, three goes to one and one goes to three follow the purple we get three go to, th to three and notice this is the identity so what we got f compose g is the identity and if you do g compose f it will be the identity in this case we will write f inverse uh, to be a g or a g inverse to be f and in fact every permutation has another permutation as an inverse if you go back to the six permutations you have seen above and uh, you will find that uh, every permutation for every permutation there is another permutation that if we compose them together we get the identity permutation uh, to practice more in multiplications one goes to, uh, to three and uh, three goes to two so we get one goes to two so we, we went that way now let's use red uh, one go two goes to one and one goes to three so follow the red we get two going to three and let's use the green three goes to two and two goes to one so we get three goes to one so this is to uh, demonstrate how fast we can do composition of permutations now if you notice that composition of functions it is an operation on s3 which means take any two permutations do the composition the result would be a permutation in s3 and this is shall be clear because compositions of bijections functions is a bijections so it has to be a bijections on s3 and it has to be one of the six permutation that we have already seen so uh, we will notice that the following this is what I just said if we choose an element in, S in uh, one of the permutation and it's three and another permutation compose them the result will be a permutation composition of functions we know that always happen now I, this is I said uh, choose any permutation you will find another permutation so that uh, uh, sorry, I'm um, here. Here, the identity identity permutation serves us as the identity uh, element. Here, if we choose any permutation f, then we can find another permutation g such that we get the identity. And we have only six permutations, so we can uh, look for such a thing so quick. For instance, if we choose f to be uh, uh, this, takes one to three see it takes one to three this is f takes one to three but g takes three to one okay they will do inverse uh inverse action f takes two to one so g will take one to two f takes three to two so g will take two to three so it is natural now if we do multiplication uh, or composition here we will get the identity see is one to going to two and two going to one two going to three three going to two three going to one and one going to three and we got the identity and if you do multiplication here we get the identity in either case and in here we will write again f inverse f is g or g inverse uh, is f notice here that if you multiply or compose f compose g or we change the order g compose f the result will be different now this do uh, do these compositions here as we had done above then you will find the result to be uh, different uh, then uh, we will conclude that uh, uh, s3 with the composition is this is composition is uh, not abelian above there we satisfied the four axioms of a group but I did not mention that now these axioms here I shall go back and write satisfying these three axioms gives us that s3 under composition is a group and this what we mean uh, uh, this is what we mean by symmetric group And it is symmetric, desymmetric, group 
on three elements so we got this to be a group and this is an example of symmetric group now we will do the same thing but instead of choosing working on a group with the three elements we will work with a group with four elements here we go now I computed uh, all uh, permutations from uh, the set S4 that consists of four elements one two three four and uh, they came out to be all these permutations and we have 24 of them now any bijective function from S4 to S4 must be represented by one of these you see in the screen for instance this is the identity it takes 1 to 1, 2 to 2, and 3 to 3, 4 to 4. Uh, we can just consider any other element. This is a projection that takes 1 to 3, 2 to 4, 3 to 2, and 4 to 1, and so on. Now, if we want to do multiplication or composition, I say it's, it's, it's natural to say multiplication of, um, of permutations, which we mean uh, composition. Now, uh, this takes 1 to 2, and then uh, 2 goes to 3 so 1 goes to 3 this takes 2 to 4 and 4 goes to 1 so this goes to 2 goes to 1 let's see 3 3 goes to uh, let me uh, keep tracking the, uh, with the colors 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2 so 3 goes to 2 and uh, one more color 4 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4 uh, uh, sorry uh, 4 goes to 3 and so 4 goes to 4 good so we performed multiplications of two permutations inside uh, S4 and uh, now uh, actually uh, let me write that despite we did not we, we are not proving it here uh, that uh, S4 S4 symmetric group with four element under composition is a group and if you like you can check that uh, the identity element is there any two permutation you take the composition you get a permutation which is there associativity happen now for any permutation like this one here the one in blue there is an inverse so let's look for inverse of that permutation actually the inverse is, is, is the same permutation but with the flipping the rows okay like this uh, this permutation here takes 1 to 3 2 to 4 3 to 2 and 4 to 1 so I will do the opposite I will take 3 to 1 4 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 1 to 4 so I take 1 to 4 and 2 uh, 1 to 4 and 2 to 3 so I can I can find it uh, somewhere 1 to 4 and I will take 2 uh, to 3 and then uh, I will take uh, 3 to 1 and uh, and what and 4 to 2 so here it is so this is these two permutations and are inverse for each other okay takes 3 to 1 4 to 2 2 to 3 and uh, one to four so if you multiply them if you com do composition of them then you will get the identity so uh, it's direct now to conclude that s4 is a group similar thing we can do for s5 or s6 uh, so uh, s any number is a group and it is called symmetric group uh, in here we will do just uh, computations in s of f6 okay uh, that has uh, six factorial permutations here uh, I will go back and write the order of s4 consists of 24 elements we have already seen that uh, and also order of s3 I did not write that it consists of six elements now this says here order of s6 consists of six factorial elements and that equals 720 permutations there are in s6 uh, and how how do we know that we will see but first let's do the multiplication here one goes to six and six goes to one 
So 1 goes to 6. 2 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 4. So we get 2 goes to 4. 3 goes to 2 and 2 goes to 5. So we get 3 goes to 5. 4 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 2. So we get 4 goes to 2. 5 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 1. So we'll get 5 goes to 1. 6 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 3. So we'll get 6 goes to 3. So good. We have done multiplication in uh, S6. And uh, this is enough for you now to get used to multiplication of permutations inside any S. Now, how do we know that uh, uh, Sn consists of uh, n permutations? In fact, I want to write here that uh, the group of permutations on n elements under composition is a group. And this is called a uh, group of symmetry. group of symmetries of n elements uh, and it has the order of Sn is n factorial it has n factorial elements why is that true let us see now to make a bijection on S it means we will send, uh, we will take the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on till we reach n. We will send 1 to some element. But we have n choices. So here we will send 1 to n choices. Now, we shall exclude the element we chose as an image of n. We shall exclude it and then we will say we will send two to one of the remaining elements. We cannot keep that element, worrying that two will go to the same element that one went to, and then we will not get a bijection. So we are left here with n minus one choices. So when we take an image of two, we must throw it away so that uh, we can choose a, an image for three. So we have excluded two elements already, image of one and image of two. So we are left with n minus two choices and we keep doing so till we reach the very last end. When we send, want to send n to some element, we will find ourselves left with one element and the stage before it, we will find ourselves left with two elements. Now, so we have n choices times n minus one choices, n, n minus two and so on, all the way to here, and that will give us uh, the order uh, to be uh, the order of Sn to be n factorial elements. So the order of S7, uh, for example, is uh, 7 factorial. So here we see Sn forms uh, a non abelian group, it's non abelian uh, with uh, n factorial elements, and it's called symmetric group with n elements. Good. So we have reached the symmetric groups of n elements. This is the first kind of groups of permutations now we will see another kind of groups of permutations which is called dihedral groups okay what is the dihedral group uh, we will introduce it introduce the idea by working with uh, the group uh, uh, the elements of d4 so for instance we will choose four that means it is a group of symmetries of the square what does that mean Assuming we have a square as we do here and the vertices are at these posi positions one here two in here three in here and four in here We will work. We will do all kind of translations But that keeps the shape of the square as it is and I mean by the shape where the vertices are in the same positions they may permute they may change their positions, but the vertices shall stay at the same positions. Uh, I mean the ordered pair. So first move we do is do nothing. Leave the square as it is. So we send one to one 
and 2 to 2 and 3 to 3 and 4 to 4 and then this is our 0 and this is the identity okay now we can uh, if we rotate the square 90 degrees then we will pertain the shape as it is but the, the places the numbers of vertices will be different now if we rotate 90 degrees what will happen one will goes to two two goes to three three goes to four and four goes to one as we see here this is take the place of two one goes to two two to three three to four and four to one and here we go one goes to two two to three three to four and four to one now we will do another translation that retain the uh, the shape of the square which is rotation 180 degrees 180 degrees means one will go to three uh, two will go to four uh, four will go to two and three will go to one here you go so one go to three and three goes to one two goes to four and four goes to two and th the new places of the vertices are here so and we call it r2 now we will do another rotation by degree of an angle of 270 and what will happen for 270 one will go to four so here it is one goes to four now two goes to one here we go two goes to one and three goes to two here we go three goes to two and four goes to three here we go four goes to three okay good so we have uh, we concluded this permutation here now we finished the permutation the rotation sorry so and we have other translations that keeps the uh, the shape of the square as it is which is a reflection about the x-axis and we will call it d reflection about the x-axis here is the x-axis in blue so reflection it means now uh, two will goes to uh, four and four will goes to two but one will stay as it is and th three will go stay as it is so one goes to one and three goes to three they stay as where they are but two goes to four and four goes to two so this is reflection about the x-axis and again we can do reflection about the y-axis reflection about the y-axis so four goes to four two goes to two but one goes to three and three goes to one here we go one goes to three three goes to one two to two and four to four and this is called t again two we have two more translations that keeps the square unchanged and they are reflections reflection about the line y equal x here is the line y equal x so when we do that reflection one goes to two and two to one three to four and four uh, to three and here we go okay and one other reflection which is about the line y equal negative x here it is and we see one goes to four four goes to one three goes to two and two goes to three and we get uh, this reflection which we call v so we got four elements four permutations and these are the only four permutations that correspond to the only translations that keeps the square unchanged so by having these permutations uh, we will have a group but before we move there uh, let us notice that if we start with if we start with h like start with uh, with a square but do the h h here means uh, reflection about this line y equal x so do the reflection after you do the reflection do the rotation 90 degrees this is r1 
rotation 90 degrees so we get this is r1 so after rotation 3 will go to 2 and so on so we get this shape okay now what we what i want to explain here that these geometric movements so it is reflection about the line y equal x and then after the reflection we do rotation these can be represented using composition of permutations here we go so first we applied h first we applied h and this is h and then we applied r1 and this is r1 so do the composition and then we get that and this represents the resulting shape we got when we do it when we did the geometric movement and to confirm that here one goes to three three goes to one four goes to four and two goes to two and here they are so what i want to see here geometric movements are represented by permutation composition okay now we will conclude that d4 is indeed a group so the list of the elements of d4 they are here the list of elements of d4 are 0 r1 r2 r3 these are rotations uh, h and v are uh, uh, reflections about the x-axis and uh, reflection about the line d uh, uh, d and t uh, I just said that uh, above there, uh, sorry, H is the reflection about uh, the line, uh, but uh, that was not true. Uh, H actually is the reflection about uh, the Y axis. So I must erase that. Uh, sorry for that. H is the reflection about the Y axis here. Okay. No, uh, actually, sorry. What uh, did I do? No, H. This is the naming. Uh, forgive me. I just uh, mixed uh, the naming. I think I was uh, I was correct that H was a reflection about this line. No, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, there was nothing bad. There was nothing wrong. Okay. So let's go back and list the elements of D4. Now in this table, it shows the results of composing any two elements of D4. For instance. If we choose uh, R1, compose R1 with D, do the composition as we learned, and then we get as a result the permutation V. Okay. Now, more importantly, we will conclude from this uh, table uh, the following. Clearly, uh, D4 is closed under uh, this composition because simply composing two bijective function is bijective so or if you choose any two uh, in the row and make uh, any two uh, two permutations one from the row top row and one from the left column and do the per the composition you will find the element staying in d4 so from the table it's clearly closed composition of functions is known to be associative now the table shows two things first r0 is the identity you see uh, this column on here represent the uh, composition of r0 with any other element and the result will stay is that other element and same thing for that row so indeed r0 is the identity and every element in d4 has an inverse okay let's choose arbitrary elements let's see what is the inverse of d for instance so we will go to the column that contains d and then we get r0 here which is the identity so the composition of d and d gives the identity so uh, we conclude that the inverse of d is d itself so let us do another uh, uh, example uh, what is the inverse of r3 the inverse of r3 if we go here we find the identity listed here so the inverse of r3 is r1 so r3 inverse is r1 or we write r1 inverse 
is R3 and so on so for every element you will find another element it might be itself uh, in which you compose and then you get the identity so that means now these four axioms here these four axioms will make me conclude that D4 is a group and that's what we want to reach D4 is a group here we go but it is not a billion group so therefore d4 is a group uh, and we mean here uh, d4 with composition is a group and it is not not a billion simply if we go and uh, compose d and h and change the order and the 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 result will be not equal so uh, it is non abelian group d4 is called the dihedral group of degree 4 or a group of symmetries of a square uh, because the elements of d4 are, are permutations that represent geometric translations that keeps the square as it is so uh, the, the symmetries happens at every uh, translation okay now similarly we can define the dihedral group of degree n where we start with n polygon and do all the translations that pertain the shape of that polygon and uh, we will get dn to be a group and it is called the dihedral group of degree n and to understand this better i made two more examples on uh, the dihedral groups uh, d3 uh, and uh, uh, d5 but let me go back to d4 and uh, uh, we have seen that the elements of d4 how many of them are there we have uh, four elements so i will go here and write the uh, cardinality or the order of this group is eight we have eight elements and this come out to be two times four where this four is in here and this comes by no accident and you will see this is a general formula for the order of dihedral groups uh, uh, for uh, D dn actually and let me write here the order of uh, this group dn the one we talked here the order of dn will be always the number of translation of an polygon that keeps the shape of an unchanged this number of translations will be two times n because simply we will have uh, n reflections and n rotations so n plus n movements and uh, to uh, uh, more let me make uh, this definition more sensible let's go and uh, look at uh, d3 let's obtain the group d3 what and the rotation will be zero degree and 120 degree and 140 degree so the the rotations will be uh, according to some angle so if we have n polygon then the rotate the angle of rotation at each time will be 2 pi over n or 360 degrees over uh, n so we are working with d3 here so 360 degrees divided by 3 will uh, we will get 120 this is the degree of rotation the one we have already worked with was d4 so 360 degrees divided by 4 is 90 that's why when we worked with a square we rotated the uh, the square 90 degrees at each time in d3 we will rotate the triangle uh three three uh, gone uh, the triangle sorry uh, by uh, 120 degree at each time and this but we will do it here for quick now uh, this represents here the triangle itself so with with no rotation so we get the identity now if you rotation, do rotation 100 and degrees then one will go to three so i will do it this way for one will go to two sorry two will go to three and three will go to four and then we get this the shape now if i use green to make rotation of 240 degrees three will go one two goes to three and three will goes to two and uh, two will goes to one and then we get this uh, in red now what's about reflection uh, if we do reflection around this line then one goes to one two goes to three and three goes to two then we get this permutation reflection about this line uh, one goes to three three goes to one and two goes to one two goes to two to itself 
here we go and this rotation three goes to itself uh, one goes to two and two goes to one and we get the uh, this uh, permutation so for s3 we have six permutations and uh, they are listed here and in fact uh, this comes to be the same as s3 and remember that the order of this group is two times three which is uh, six now at the end we will look at uh, uh, the dihedral group of uh, degree five the dihedral group of degree 5 uh, which is the group of symmetries of the pentagon the pentagon so uh, at the beginning uh, this is uh, the identity the identity now to obtain uh, this first element which we will call uh, this is uh, r1 uh, we will do rotation by 72 degrees which is 360 divided by 5 so 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5, and 5 to goes to 1. So we get this one. So let's do it again with rotation with 2 times uh, 72 degrees. Then 1 goes to 3, uh, 3 goes to 5, uh, 4 goes to 1. Uh, sorry, um, uh, 1 goes to 3, 3 goes uh, to 5, 4 goes to 1. Uh, uh, okay. No, I made a mistake. And 5 goes to 2 sorry and uh, and two goes to four this is fine here we go two goes to four. okay so we get this one uh, and so on and you if keep you if, uh, you rotated uh, uh, three times 72 degrees you get this and you get that this are rotation this is we may call this rotation two and this rotation is three and so on and this rotation four and now what's about the reflection if we reflect about this line one goes to itself uh, 2 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 2, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3. Reflection about this line here. So 4 and 5 goes to each other, 1 and 3 and goes to each other. Reflection about this line here. Same thing happened with the other uh, uh, translations. And then we get these elements uh, as uh, that corresponds to reflections so we have d5 consisting of 10 elements 10 permutations and they are listed here and then uh, d5 is a group and their permutation uh, compositions uh, and the order of d5 is 10 and this brings us to the end of permutations group and thank you